In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Eucharist. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring new light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O God, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all the land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in his punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost, but for that reason, I was mercifully treated so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance? Or what woman having 10 coins and losing one would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel may be called the Gospel of the Lost and Found. There's a coin that's lost and then found, a sheep that's lost and then found. And all these parables speak of the joy of God who rejoices when God finds us when we're lost and forgives us when we sin. The setting of Jesus telling these parables was that he was eating and sharing a meal with tax collectors and outcasts. 
and the Pharisees were criticizing him and saying, if only he knew who he was with. And in St. Luke, the gospel of mercy, we find these beautiful stories that Jesus told. That lost sheep, the shepherd had a hundred sheep. That's a lot of sheep. I'm amazed that he would even notice one missing. And Jesus is speaking about how God is always caring for us, attentive to our needs. God does notice everything about us. And then I would ask the question, well, how long would that shepherd look for that lost sheep? I think the answer is as long as it takes. And how far would the shepherd go to find that lost sheep? As far as it takes. And when Jesus was telling this story to the shepherds, what shepherd among you wouldn't leave the 99 in the desert and go look for the one? All the shepherds were saying, I wouldn't do that. That doesn't make economic sense. Forget the one, hold on to my 99, especially in the desert. But Jesus tells the story because he wants to affirm the way God loves us, that God does do that, that he loves us to the point of ridiculousness. That was the message that Jesus was giving us. It's like what St. Catherine of Siena said, that God is crazy in love with us, or that St. Cardinal John Henry Newman, he said, I wouldn't think much of a love that wasn't at times extravagant. Well, God's love for us is extravagant and it is unconditional and it's limitless. And when we are lost and the farthest from God, God is driven to find us. He's just captivated to reach out, to find us and to bring us back. And when we turn to God with a contrite heart, and ask forgiveness, there is great joy in heaven. So my dear friends, let us um, embrace the privilege of our baptism of knowing God's forgiveness by turning to the Lord and asking for it. And when we go to confession, we make God really happy. Let us also be instruments of Christ's mercy and forgiveness to others, not judging others, but extending our compassion, our mercy, and that great love of God to them. This week, as we live our lives, let us remember that God is crazy in love with us and everyone. We proclaim our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God, our Father, you continue to love us even when we sin and turn our hearts from you. Please grant us the gift of repentance that we might experience your mercy. For all who work in areas of ministry, may they extend the compassion of mercy of Christ to all they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater awareness of God's love and mercy in areas of strife in our world, may men and women depend on God's grace to change their ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel they cannot be forgiven, may they realize that Christ came for them and will give them grace overflowing if they just turn to him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, your love is with us always. Thank you for your care for us each day and friendship in our lives. Trusting in that forgiving love, we make our prayer to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. And by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful to the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception here in Washington, D.C. to host our Sunday Mass and that we were able to share in praying together um, on this beautiful day of our Lord. And as we begin the fall in a new season of parish life and ministries, let us um, be ambassadors of God's mercy and love because we're all the lost coin, we're all the lost sheep, we're all the prodigal son and daughter of God, but we are so loved by God who always seeks us and desires to be with us. So have a great week, everyone. Um, know how loved you are by God and let's share that love to others generously knowing that we'll never run out of God's love for us. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. We always say that where there's a need, there's a night. And uh, I think you really see that. You, you see that in this ministry. I started this in memory of my twin brother, Brian. Knowing Father McGivney took care of the homeless in his time, we are doing his work at our time. People have a fear of giving money. So we decided to craft a bag and fit what we could into a one gallon Ziploc bag. It's hard for any of us to change the world. And I don't think the Lord is calling us to change the world, but I think what he's calling us to do is to change our little piece of the world. And I think that's what you see Donna and Walter doing. They're really changing Waterbury and they're improving the lives of the homeless here in Waterbury.